Hello, I'm Karen Giannone with BBC World News. A change in US strategy in Syria is expected, but where will it lead? And rebuilding Nepal, five months on from the devastating earthquake, bureaucratic delays leave many facing a harsh winter under canvas. The US will provide air support for rebels in Syria in fighting against the Islamic State group. It's part of a shift in American policy. We're expecting President Obama to announce details of that in the next few hours. But the Pentagon has already put out a statement. Uh, the US Secretary of Defense, Ashton Carter, has told a news conference here in London that the US is looking at different ways to work with and train Syrian opposition groups. Let's talk to Gary O'Donoghue in Washington. Gary, you've been uh, hearing what's been coming out of the Pentagon. Just fill us in. Well, staying with Syria, reports from there say that in spite of those Russian airstrikes we've been talking about, the Islamic State group has been gaining more territory. Jim Muir, who's uh, watching developments from Beirut. First of all, Jim, I mean, how significant do these apparent IS gains seem? So th those opposed to the Russian intervention will say, look, uh, this is evidence that your strategy isn't working. Jim, and uh, news of a very high-ranking military general uh, from Iran being killed by Islamic State fighters in Syria. Now, in the end, it didn't go to one of the high-profile favourites among them, Angela Merkel and the Pope, but to a group, Tunisia's National Dialogue Quartet. This year's recipients of the Nobel Peace Prize were given the honour for their contribution to building democracy in Tunisia after the Jasmine Revolution of 2011. One of those involved, trades unionist Hussein Abbasi, says he was overwhelmed by the award. Richard Galpin reports. Let's get more from the BBC's Navina Kotor, who's in Tunis. And Navina, this quartet is credited with effectively saving Tunisia from civil war. How close do Tunisians feel they got to that point? Now, there's been a marked increase in violence between Israelis and Palestinians on the Gaza Strip. Israeli soldiers fired at angry demonstrators who approached the Nahal Oz crossing, killing five Palestinians and injuring 20. In another incident, Israeli police say a Palestinian man was shot dead in the West Bank after he stabbed a policeman near a Jewish settlement. And meanwhile, in Jerusalem, a Palestinian stabbed an Israeli teenager in the centre of the city, wounding him lightly. Police say the attacker was later arrested. Well, access to the Al-Aqsa Mosque, or Temple Mount, in Jerusalem's old city has been one of the issues stoking tensions. Our correspondent, Yolan Nell, is there. Yolan Nell, coming up here on BBC World News. I'm Karen Giannone. This is BBC World News. Our latest headlines... The United Nations Security Council has authorised European naval operations to seize and dispose of vessels operated by human traffickers crossing the seas from Libya. The latest move comes as around 20 Eritrean refugees make their way to Sweden from Italy. They're the first to be reset resettled as part of the European Union's newly agreed relocation plan. The scheme, which was approved last month, aims to redistribute 120,000 refugees from Italy and Greece to several member states. The BBC's correspondent in Rome, James Reynolds was there as their flight took off. Now, rebuilding Nepal after April's devastating earthquake was never going to be easy, but the pace of reconstruction is turning out to be incredibly slow. International aid remains unspent because of bureaucracy, and thousands of families are still living in tents. From Nepal, Sanjoy Majumda reports. Sanjoy Majumda reporting there. Now, the film Lamb became the first ever Ethiopian movie to make it into the official selection at the Cannes Film Festival earlier this year. It's now showing in cinemas across Ethiopia and has been well received. The story is of a young boy's relationship with his pet lamb. We caught up with the film's two main young stars, Rediat Amare and Kidist Siyum. Now, you may have thought your commute was bad. Have a look at this, though. These are pictures from China, and they show what happens when 30 lanes, or more than 30 lanes, merge into, well, far fewer lanes. This is the end of an enormous jam stretching over four kilometres, holding up people making their way back home to Beijing after a national holiday. There will be more news coming up here on BBC World News. Stay with us.